Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Undefeated Podcast. The only podcast with two undefeated fighters, fam. Chatting it up. Listen, if this is your first time listening to the pod, walk one. If this yeah. is your last time listening to the pod, be safe out there. It's rough. <laughs> no, it's rough. It's rough. Scary. Mad things going on. Mad. Scary hours. I hear it still. Listen, Talk Connor... Connor Ben, G- uh, listen. Wait, fine, what are you bro. doing? I, 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 what know, are you I know, doing? I know, I know. I'm just excited. I'm just excited, bro. Fuzzled, fam. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, Skyline yeah. and Shumel, I would never forget the tailor to take. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. All right, bro. What's your tailor to take, fam? I'm not even gonna do a long thing. Still, it's just because we got too much to talk about, and I'm I'm not happy at the moment. So it's a un- it's an upset tailor to take. Listen, I'm O and O, fam. Truly undefeated. I never fought, never lost. If I did, someone gets knocked out. It's not me. On the height thing, check box, Rick. It will say, shorter than Travis. Speed, amazing. They wanted to put me in a new Marvel movie. I said, no, I can't. I know it, I know it feels superhuman. I know it feels like I could be a mutant. I know it looks like that, but I'm just me. That's what I told them. And I said, I just want to get back to podding. So I'm here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been a whole superhero. I could have been a whole superhero, bro. But I said, listen, hey. I'd rather do the pod. So yeah, I'm here. I'm here doing my work, fam. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, um, it's what's that when they say not a selfish act or something? <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's one of those ones. You got into your mother Teresa bag and said, you know what? The world first. Because I don't do this to me. I do this to them. There you go. Um, <laughs> big man, <laughs> what's your tail of the tape? Tail of the tape? Um, you know, as you said, truly undefeated. Um, you know, all the men they could have found have tried and all of them failed. You know, we boast the perfect record of 2-0. That's it. With And it doesn't just stop there. You know, we got a 50% knockout rate. That That's means it. half the men that entered the ring with me left on their back, bro. I don't think you do. understand. Paramedics were on standby. They had to do their jobs. It wasn't going to be an easy night's work when I'm around. You know, when we look at the height, you know, we're actually working on developing that actually oh um yeah, yeah. there's you're giving there's, that away you yeah, sure well, I've told them that yeah well look there's stem cell research treatment that I'm taking at the moment and I've seen growth I've seen growth um it is affecting the knees somewhat yeah. but there's an extra three quarters of an inch there so you know we can be <laughs> developing into a six four fighter you know and that opens everything up you know we start oh, looking at colies we we start looking at the you know, the cruiserweights, the react pause, and we start to open things up just a bit. But it's just research right now. Um, <laughs> as far as speed goes, <sighs> racked up a couple speeding tickets yesterday. Um, I wanted to show, I know I said I, I was with some friends and they were like, I heard you say that on the pod, but can you really do it? So we stopped at several different speed cameras <laughs> and wah, 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 you know what I mean? I gave him that work. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> the letters here today. Pictures of me in HD letting the shots off. Now, you know, you lot think it's banter and it's all fun and games, but, you know, there's, there's, I've had a letter from the government. And a letter from the government. What did the government right? say, bro? They just basically asked me to provide some blood samples. They're trying to basically create, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of Android technology being created, yeah. you know, the, the government are trying to get yeah. those type of soldiers in there, but they want to combine my DNA with the t- artificial intelligence out there. Oh, even. Because you know, apparently the the PBs I'm setting got godly numbers. When you say godly numbers, man, I need to wait. You know what? And so, all right, let's talk about the forty yard sprint. Forty yard sprint. I'm running at a one point six. Yeah, what? One point six down and back. <laughs> See you two and now. <laughs> You know, what do you call it? Oh, boy, six down yeah. and back. <laughs> He's 2 <and> 0. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I need to say something to you. This is real. This is a big announcement. Here it is. Um, we're doing it. We're doing it. So we're not moving up this. Listen, there's very rarely we'll call you out and say, hey, guys, come and support the team. This is that moment. I want to see you lot in there. If you if you're rocking with us again, because we just give you this pod, it comes out free consistently. How long have you been getting for, fam? 
a few it's years. Been, it's like three years, three and a half years. For free, <laughs> I'm out. Nah, it's true. No, sometimes you gotta say it, bro. Because sometimes you know, men will say, "Hey, ratings, ratings, ratings." Nah, 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 nah. Buy ticket, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Buy ticket, bro. What about ratings? Nah, 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 nah. I hey, like who you did, cause nah, nah, nah. Buy a ticket, man. I like, see, I like to see you there, or liking what I'm doing live. For real, yeah. Make sure you lot, man, support the thing. It'll be amazing to have you lot in the house. Um, this is a That's big cool. one, man. It's it's great to be on stage, which we're, we're, we're shutting down West End, you know, big Bloomsbury Theatre. So it's going to be true. amazing. You got anything to say, bro? Bro, listen, it's going to be exciting, fam. After yeah. we come out and share this thing down with stand up, second half, we'll be sitting there, two stools on the stage, drinking, drinking and chatting. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the ones there where it's like, bro, there'll be a phone. So basically, how it's going to work, we're going to have a phone on stage, yeah. right? And we're going to give out the phone number at the beginning of the show. Yeah, and you not text us whatever questions. The matter yeah. it, it could be anonymous because no, none of us gonna have the number saved. Yeah, ask away, and we're just gonna be boom right there for you guys and just chatting. It's gonna be fun, man. I can't wait. I cannot. I'm scared, wait. I'm scared about the Q and A part, but I'll be drinking, so it's what it is. <laughs> whatever happens, happens. <laughs> whatever happens, happens, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be the maddest podcast you probably would ever hear. Oh, uh, after, trust me. After shelling, trust the stage, me. I'm telling you, we're coming to the stage, in it. <laughs> that's all. So, yeah, man, looking forward to it. Let's get into it, man. Let's let's right. let's talk about what we're really here to talk about. Um, um, one second, is Connor it Connor Ben Eubank Jr. Fight Week? Oh, do you want to start there? You want to start there? This is the week, bro. <sighs> all right, let's go. Pick your poison, fam. I don't want to start there because I'm. Right. Where do you want to go? Let's go. I, don't, I want to start with this Eddie Hearn situation. I want to start with. I want to. I have to we have to talk about this because I yeah. I've, I've watched a few interviews and I've just collected the information. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Yeah, I am. I'm disappointed. And um, I listen to both stories. I listen to Eddie Hearn's interview. I listen to Frank Warren's son's interview. George and um George and. The, the, this fight being off makes me sick anyway. It does because there's no there's no reason for it. There's no rhyme or reason mm. for this fight not to happen. All it takes, yes, there's there's many egos in the room. There's many. There's, there's loads of egos. I agree to that. You got two fighters. I'm not gonna say Fury's ducking AJ. I think that's that'd be a stupid thing to, to say, considering he what he the mountain top that he finds himself on. With the straps, he's beaten. He feels confident. He's not going to look at um, someone that's lost twice and say, "I'm scared of this challenge." So I don't think this is a fury duck duck thing, right? Now, three times, in, three, three yeah. times if we're being specific to somebody who would have pointed that out in there, <laughs> listen to this. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it's that. But then again, there was different energy for the Usyk one. He didn't want to see Usyk. He was talking about retirement. He didn't. He wasn't really trying to say Usyk's name, but it is what it is. Usyk. Had gave an excuse that kind of let Fury off the hook, but Fury was not interested in him anyway. We have, we always have to remember the the chron chronology chronology of this whole thing, right? Fury was like, "No, I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire. The only way I come back is for AJ." Mm. Usyk Usyk wins. Now we well, now you you get rid of belts. You're not really saying Usyk's name. Then Usyk finally says, "You know what? Well, I'm not ready to fight until until Jan." Okay, so that situation's closed, right? We open up this situation, and this is where now I have to say Eddie Hearn is just looking a bit funny in the light for me personally. If you're going to do chrono chronology and the chronological order, Ooh, you let's do it. every part of it, bro. Go on so, then. So don't don't, don't, don't say to. that I'm bit happy. and then. I'm happy to go on. I'm right, happy. Cool. I'll, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll give the floor to you, bro. All right, cool. So the offer comes in from Fury. Yeah. yeah. Boom, yeah. Boom, 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 does the video social media. Everybody goes mad. AJ Humble responds offer. back. Yeah. AJ comes back, calm fam. I'm not going to do this on social media. Just hold up my man, and then we'll set the thing up. Convo mm -hmm. goes on. You know, there's there's talk about what it looks like. 60-40 offer. They've accepted the offer. So that's what's happening in the days coming. Boom. Mm -hmm. uh, Queen passes away. That whole weekend, everything stops. Yeah. Tyson Fury is doing daily videos. That all takes a break. Right? Yeah. So in this time, they said, we're not doing any business when it's happened. Right? So when people are saying... You know, you want the fight done in 10 days. you got to minus that three, four-day stretch in between yeah. there. 
Yeah. So if it's 10 days, because I can't remember the specifics of the, the, the dates, but we're doing 10 days. Now we're down to six days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that time, there's back and forth. There's amendments. There's, there's this going on. After that weekend comes, they're like, yeah, we're having chats. Things are going positive. We're going back and forth. Cool. Tassel three jumps on the gram. Bow. You lot got till the end of today to get this fight over the line. Both sides say, bro, we've just had a meeting. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like you're saying Monday, right? He was in, that's when he was looking very spice, spicy at the after the fight. M Monday? Monday? Yeah. And then man were like, I don't know why he said Monday. We've got a meeting scheduled for Monday. Yeah. yeah. Frank Warren said, yeah, listen, <laughs> don't disregard that. Yeah. Eddie said, wow, this is the first time me and Frank are on the same page. Yeah. They're going back and forth even still. Out of nowhere, again, Tyson Fury jumps on the gram. Look, everyone said I should. They begged me to let the thing continue. All right, fine. Now you've got till today. Again, Eddie Hearn and them, man, they're like, you know what? This is the way you're on. Like, if that's what's going to hold this thing up, calm. So now after those, after that fact has come, right? And Tyson Fury is sending contract offers to Derek Chisora. Shah is apparently in the bin because... The reaction was so bad. Then men are like, yeah, I don't think we're going to get away with this one still. So let's step it up a level and go to Chisora. Now, in that time, Eddie, Eddie's done an interview and he said, look, the guys cancelled the fight twice publicly. They put all this pressure on the negotiations for some reason. I don't know why there's a, a rush to get this thing over the line. These men should just be in the gym. They've not come back to us since Wednesday. All right? George Warren's come out and said, well, we spoke on Thursday and they've not come back to us. Mm -hmm. So now we're at this point and then uh, at the launch of the Conor Ben Eubank Jr. Um, event, which looked sick, um, oh. it looked very dope. Gareth A. Davis and Hearn going face to face. Gareth A. Davis um, didn't keep any of the same energy that he has on his individual videos. When he, when he, when he blames Eddie Hearn like, quite frankly, but face to face is, I'm not saying it's your fault. No, I'm not saying that you're to blame. No, what I'm saying is, no, what, what I meant was, it, it looks from the, no, of course, no, no. bro, dickhead thing. Anyway, so he's in there now and he's saying to, <laughs> he's saying to Eddie, wait, 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 you can't just get that. You can't just get that. <laughs> Gareth A. Davis. Gareth A. Oh, you messed up the bed. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not saying it's. No, what I'm. What I was trying to say is not. No, it's not your fault. No, I'm Eddie. Look, I'm like, bruv, big man. The amount of videos where you are frankly saying they don't want the fight. They just. They've pulled out of the fight. Now you're there. <laughs> I'm not saying, fam. Your disgrace. Your energy <laughs> credit check just is the worst. That energy you credit rating absolute, is disgusting. You are an absolute disgrace. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank Gareth you. Bro. A. Gareth, man, Gareth man, big up yourself. Big up. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, was, Eddie was standing over, man, just looming over, man. Look at him. I, look, I understand how it might have looked. <laughs> yeah, bro. Shut up. Anyway. At least you know what, and you know what, this, this there's a difference, and you know, let me big up, let me big up Adam as well, let me big up Castro as well, because at least it, he still got back in the mentions. He got back, he sent a message, you know, just to say, boom, this is my side of things. This is how I see it. So you won't want to. I'm not saying it was like I know you see it like this. I see it like this. Rare, rare. You know, you're just it, and that. Respect it. Stand on your thing in it. If you feel something, stand on your thing. Stand bro. on it, bro. So Gareth, it's it's very mad. I've seen bare interviews of you telling us how this thing's done. You can't shake no. But this is it. Let me let's let's get back into yeah, this. Sorry, story. no. There's the final but, thing I wanted to reference. So in that in in that conversation, he says to him, "Did you want the fight?" And he's like, "Did I wanted AJ to take some other fights?" Yeah. And it's yes. one of those things where Eddie has Eddie says that, and he said that from the beginning. At the post fight, at the Usyk fight, he said, "Let's do some other fights and da -da -da -da, work your way back around." The Fury fight, jumping out of nowhere, AJ says, "Run it." Eddie Hearn doesn't have to change his mind and pretend like he's always wanted it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? He's like, I was talking to my dad yesterday about this, right? And I was saying to my dad, "Let's say you were my promoter, right? And you're my dad, yeah. 
You know mm. what I am now. I'm not fighting in the gym every day. I'm not a fighter. If somehow on Twitter, Eubank Jr. and myself got into it, and he said, do you really want this fight? And I said, yes. He said, all right, run it. And I said, all right, Dad, take care of that. You still don't want this fight to happen. Mm. <laughs> so it's one of the ones where, you know, if, if that is to dictate how you might handle that whole process, maybe maybe it, on your part it's a bit slower to, to, to pull the trigger. Or mm. maybe it's, as hard, it's, it's a harder situation to get over the line than people are prepared to accept. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm I'm with you. I hear what you're saying. The, my issue is there's me, there's plenty of issues. One thing for sure is AJ and Eddie Hearn I, I were not on the same page when this was as soon as this as soon as offer came in. No, you know, that. you know that. You know that we and I, I knew that because of what Eddie Hearn said in the interview just before it and talking about how Ed, um, AJ's next step up, AJ's going is his quest. To win in the belts back, he had a long, he had a drawn out. It looked like the next year, two years. He had a two year plan. Probably it would have been two, two free fights. It would have been two free fights. Yeah, but AJ what fights twice a year. So yeah, was, on the on the without the, yeah, that, but that's like as the guy that's got all the belts. Without the belt, you're fighting way more regular than that. Okay, yeah, fine. You know what I'm saying? But then it's he had a long plan, but it wasn't the fury. It wasn't the the road. All roads was not leaving leading to fury. I don't believe that. Right. Cool. I think I think so. I don't think they were gonna prepare to not ever fight the man. I think no. it would have been a thing where they know. Remember, all of these guys Fury here in this era. Fury that's what I say. And that's what I say. All these guys right now, top four guys, they're all knocking on retirement door. One hundred percent. Whether they want to feel like oh how I am an idiot, they are Fury, Wilder, oh. Usyk, and AJ. Their retirement is gonna be sooner than it yeah. is later. So there you go. The most you're gonna do when you circle the block is two fights. That's the all yeah. you're gonna get away with because after Fury fights at Usyk, he's like, "Why am I here?" Yeah, so I'm with you. So let's go on this thing, yeah. So then, all right, cool. Eddie Hearn says what he says, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they've seen that. And this is where again, this whole offer was a bluff at first. I definitely feel that you know what? I watched this video. We know the route that they want to take. AJ's coming off a loss. There's no way he says yes to me after having the breakdown and losing to Usyk. I believe right. that was what they thought as a team. The yeah. whole team thought that, yeah. right? Yeah. It looks good. It's a good, it, it sounds good. The Gypsy King, he's done it again. He's dethroned him. No one wants it. AJ seen that and said, I'll take it. No mm -hmm. one, nobody in their world could believe it, right? Even Eddie. Even Eddie's like, oh, really? Yeah. Yep, I'll take it. Now, I have to get you on board. In my team, I've got to talk to, because AJ runs, but when people keep talking about 258 and this, that, that's his, that's his promotion thing. He is like Mayweather. So, so that, don't mean, that don't mean he sits in the office and makes the... But he can say if he's fighting or not. You can't tell Mayweather to fight someone. And if Mayweather doesn't want to fight, he's not fighting. If Mayweather no, wants to fight, he's fighting. That's what I'm saying. If this is your company, don't tell me that I can't do what I want to do. It's mine. Like, you look, under, you look work with me, but you work for me. Does that make sense? So if this, if I say uh, 258, we're going into this, let's sign a contract. We're actually signing a contract. Now, the only thing where it's different is the negotiating, the promoter. Now that conversation has to be different, and I, I definitely feel yeah with, with because of the egos. No, but no, but things you can't simplify it like that. When in terms of we're signing the contract, no, the contract has to. The contract has, has to be to, right. I'm not yeah, 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 no, yeah, definitely. and that's their job the to make sure it's right. Has to be right. That's that's their job. But if I say I'm fighting, get the contract right is the main thing, right? Now with the egos in the background, yeah. And I definitely feel like it was already, we're already skating on thin ice with everybody in terms yeah. of how they feel about each other. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, now yeah. when when certain things are happening, like when they're saying, look, we've had a conversation. I'm not talking, I've spoken directly to you at times and I'm speaking to somebody else. Now it's starting to say to me, well, <laughs> I don't feel like, I, well, I know for sure, Eddie did not want his fighter going this route. I know that for sure. It's the, it's just not the route that he wanted, and it's annoying because we all wanted we all wanted this, and now it makes people look at the only great thing about the situation is people are not looking at AJ like he's a coward. That's the only good thing about the situation. Yeah, because he's not it's, like it, and and also because of the fact that in the midst of all of this, and whilst people are, are prepared to get their blame Eddie hats on, Fury pulled out this fight twice. In the space of 10 yeah. days. Fury's still been 100%. Fury has been Fury the whole way, right? And he's like, he's up and down. We don't know what Fury's doing. Fury tells us he's retiring, he's staying, he's doing. We, you can't, 
basically you can't actually listen to Tyson Fury in terms of in terms of anything. But what was behind Tyson Fury was a team trying to make something happen, is what I'm saying. I hate, I hate, but, but in, the over, same, in the same way that AJ calls shots and says to do this and that, Fury does as well. Don't have you thinking that he's just a guy <laughs> with a microphone in his hand shouting and chatting rubbish. He is also in the same position on that side. Because otherwise, you'd force him to fight better opponents from the years gone before. And he doesn't. He's like, bro, bring me Tom Schwartz. I want Otto Wallin. I want Sima Safari or whoever that guy was. No one mm -hmm. in there is saying, there's some more money available with these other guys. Bro, he's not hearing that. But it feels to me yeah, that at, I feel, this. Is my honest feelings is, I don't think both, I think both sides looked at it at one point and said, we can make more money. I think, honestly, I think, because there's no way, bro, this is the biggest fight in the world. The, ne the networks are going to accept it. That's the one thing. The networks will, because you're not going to get this kind of piece of a pie in any fight that you promote next. Even, I don't even think Crawford Errol will do the, as much money as what this potential fight. It's the biggest fight in boxing. So we know what it's going to, I'm talking it's worldwide, the, the second, world will. It's the second biggest fight. What's this, what's the biggest fight? AJ Wilder. That's that's true. That's true. That one there, cheese and bread fam. I saw a video the other day, and it was like a fake trailer of what that fight looks like. I don't know yet because we have to see Wilder come back. There's a memory recency bias is a big thing in boxing, and there's not. He's going to spark Hellenius's. We just need bro. to see him though. We need to see him to get excited. It's like as you said, you we 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 um we posted that clip of uh, Mike Tyson. Doing, you know, looking like Mike Tyson in the world go crazy. Recency bias, right? So I'm saying we have to see a yeah. um a great performance from Wilder for us to be like, I imagine America, UK, it'll it'll go off perfectly, right? But we have to. The main thing I'm saying is it's it's a shame that these guys because we're talking about two days of of silence. They spoke on what Thursday, Friday it hasn't been. Everyone's agreed everything. All there has to be is an email that goes out to you to say, "This is it in black and white from our side." Can you make this happen? That's where. That's the point that I was when I was listening to um, when I was listening to Frank Warren's son George. Yeah, that was the part that I was missing. He said, "We're waiting on an email from them to say we um these are the final terms. What do you call it? Now it's up to us to get our um our lawyers." To send a new contract with these new um with these amendments in it, right? How do you stop at this hurdle? This doesn't feel right. So both teams must be saying, well, Cardiff ain't big enough. Maybe it's Wembley. We've given ourselves not enough. We haven't given ourselves enough time. You know what? Let it be what it's gonna be. We'll come back to it later. That's what it feels like to me because you don't walk away from the table now. Yes, but my thing is it it, it does come down to that hurdle, but it also it comes down to Whose version of events do we believe? And it, it's one of those things where, at this point, it comes down to, and it's probably just going to lean to who you probably rocked with before. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Whether you're Eddie or you're Warren, like it's it's going to come down to one of those. Now Not you can do it like that. I think you can do no, because, it no, because you know because you have right. And how remember, Eddie's, Eddie's last words were, "We're still waiting for them to come back." George's last words were, we're still waiting for them to come back. At this point, we've arrived at the exact same point on both sides. And now we're just saying, okay, well, where am I going to go? And that's where we are. So it's a, it's a frustrating situation that it's, the talks are up. But you got to remember what Eddie said in that interview at the same time. He said, as of right now, it's off. Later in the interview, he says, we're still open to those conversations. We're still open to this thing moving forward. So him saying, it's off. They've not come back to us, but we're still open to moving forward. That's good. So if 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 other men are saying, well, it's off then, why is it final for you but not final for him? And he's the one that don't want it. So it's the, at this point, we are at a place where it's like, well, we have to choose who we're going to believe. It's a, such a tough one, man. I, I like, And also, it's one of them ones here, yeah? Why well, I get... If, if it comes down to, you know, money or whatever, the, the, because a lot of people are talking about um, AJ's got other sponsors and all these different things that play into it. You can't underestimate how difficult that is of a situation to get around, right? Because AJ's been the, you know, A side by and large most of his career. As he's stepping into that place of being the unified champ, 
you say to yourself, AJ ain't going to be fighting on BT, ever. Yeah. What, he, he's not fighting on PBC. It's not happening. Not one day, not not never. So you could get into a place where you'll sign a contract where it's like image rights and da 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 on this network. We don't know the thing, the complexities of these contracts. And it's not just as easy as saying, oh, yeah, get your things in order. Bro, it's very difficult to navigate those spaces. A buyout is real when the man has sold a certain thing and it's bought out. So now you've got to negotiate with this guy to make sure this guy's happy with what he's bought out because he owns this IP. Now, you look at someone like Tyson Fury on the other side, and you say, well, you've got no endorsements of note. So for you, it is... Not major, not major, not like what... A, nothing yeah, what, on the scale of what AJ's got. Nothing yeah. on the scale. Do you understand? There's not much money in... There's other man's pocket money in... There's not other man's money in your pocket like that. It's not crazy. Whereas you look at AJ, it's like, bro, the brand is, is, is huge. So whilst you have a situation where Maestro says that you know, Fury tried to flex on him by saying, yo, sign this today. Da, 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 da. It's one of those moments where in that behavior, you start to realize that regardless of how the, 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 the chips are falling, the A side is the A side. And not A side is in his name's going to come out last and he's the champion walking to the ring. No, the A side in terms of the, the game that matters to Fury. And I, and I say this, the game that matters to Fury because yeah. Fury, I think Fury likes boxing, but he loves money. So in his mind, he wants, he's always wanted that seat. Yeah, I'm the boxing man and I'm this and that, da, 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 but I want to be the money man. Yeah? Like, I'm not, forget all that other stuff you hear about. It. Bro, if you really want to look at Fury, the talk he says, oh, I'll just drive a Passat. He's in Ferraris and he's buying new cars all the time. The guy is very flashy, but he knows the market that he's in front of. He doesn't, he doesn't give it to you on the nose like how Floyd did. The guy is as flashy as they come. So when he's looking at my man, he's thinking, you've got all that peas, brother, and I want some of that, and I want it correctly. So this it's one of the ones where, you know, I struggle to just jump on the thing that he's scared, but I also have to ask, then why do you behave like somebody who's scared? No, why do you behave I'm, so erratic? No, I'm, in terms of the negotiations are going on. This thing will eventually land in the right place. All you need to do is go in the gym. Go in the gym and train for the brother. Trev, imagine you saw the video. You saw the same video I saw. You shouldn't ask a man why is that erratic. Look at him. <laughs> when he so when he asks him about what do you call it, when he asks him about so his his behaviors or his thingies can't really be you it's can't tied to, it's tied to you, other things. It's yeah, you can't you can't look at that and say, Hey, what should I get from you right now? Because there's influence. End of the day, there's influence and there's and, and unfortunately he has to fight, he has to he has to deal with that. It, that's been um a thing that he's had to deal with. In his career, he's not the first boxer to deal with it. It's but like this has been a part of boxing, right? So now we can't tell we he wakes up and he'll decide what day it is. Do you know what I mean? And he'll argue with you that it, it could be Wednesday, he'll tell you, nah, I'm telling you right now it's Monday. And this is that's where he that's where he is. But then they've known how to work with him and deal with him as that person. Again, I still do not understand for the life of me why he vacated the ring magazine belt. I don't understand. There's that yeah. that doesn't make any sense. And, and not just that. Saying, Sorry, well, go on. Love your point. That doesn't make any sense at all. Like no one can make, especially not retiring. Like, so you have one, you get rid of, and and it's a special belt. This is a special belt, right? So then you say to yourself, "Well, why'd you do that? You didn't have to. You just gave it. You said, no, nope, don't want it, right? Not just, not just that, yeah. But he has no intentions of fighting Isik. Like I saw." Like, who is it? I think it was Maestro that said this on the Monday Night Smoke. Or someone else said it. I can't remember. If it's Maestro, big up you. But if it's not, then big up them. He's not fighting Usyk. We're not going to see that fight. And I was thinking about this. And I was like, the reality of this thing started to play. I was like, we're not seeing the Usyk fight. Why are you saying that? Put it this way. He's not made any energy to want to fight him in the first place. Right? He put a 500 million pound tag on that fight. Mm -hmm. I don't think people let that slide like that wasn't crazy. That was ridiculous. Like, and, wait, and he done a time thing as well. He done the time thing. The time thing. He yeah, done the he done the contract negotiation time. If it's not done by then, so I'm saying. out. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. yeah. So, time thing, bro. So, and we just let that slide. That he just put these mad terms on it and made it impossible to work. He comes into the AJ situation, does exactly that again. Why are we not able to say it's the same thing? But we'll comfortably say, yeah, he shook up Usyk. Now, I want to bring your attention to this, yeah? And, and you know, men are going to go crazy with this, but you know me and you know I don't care. 
Mm-hmm. Deontay Wilder did an interview with Dan Raphael, and he says, it might sound crazy, but I can see Joshua beating Fury. I think it just comes down to belief. Then he started to say, he he just doubts himself sometimes. Like, not like me. I'm a killer. I believe I'm a killer. I'm, it's the energy, the feeling. Da, 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 da. He goes, he has all the tools, though. He just he can do everything. He just doesn't have that belief. So when I look at that and I say, he's talking about um... Wilder said that about AJ. So when I look at this situation, right, that lets me know that regardless of the noise and all the stuff that plays out in the narratives and this and that and the third, these fighters know what they see in each other. Yeah. Because through everything that's happened with AJ's career, Wilder should be the one saying, I'll just clip him and head top him. There's no issue there. And I look at it and I think, you think Fury looks at Joshua and sees an easy walk in the park? Not at all. I don't think so even slightly. And I don't think he Fury will not be able to watch those Usyk fights or the Ruiz fights and take anything away from what, um, as to regards to what he's going to do in there. Because he's nothing like Usyk and he's nothing like Ruiz. So don't think that Tyson Fury doesn't look at AJ and is a bit like... Yeah, I fancy myself because he fancies himself against anyone more than likely. There you go. And he, but at he, the same time, he also knows he might be able to win this one. The only thing is the 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 dilute remember, because all boxes have to be diluted. I've while everyone now I've decided all boxes are diluted. Like they just make of mad course, they, they have to look at someone and say, Yeah, I can beat him. Without, without without knowing anything. You just look at someone and say, Yeah, I beat him. Yeah, that's yeah, a deluded that's... take, like, no matter what, right? He, so it has to some scale of delusion, right? So I know that when when Fury was way overweight, he looked at Deontay Wilder and said, I beat him. That's insane, yeah? But he, in his heart, he just thought, you know what I mean? So there's no Why way... Why doesn't he feel that way about AJ? He does, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying to you that I think he does. I don't yeah, but think... you're saying he does, but why is he not behaving like he does? Because when he went through those negotiations with Wada, he just went through it. It just went through and it happened. No, but he needed a he needed a bring in. Remember the, the oh yeah, no, you're, you're right. He you're needed right, a right, right. bring in. It was oh, about yeah. bring in. He needed a comeback. He needed something, and he just said, you know what? Like I know I'm overweight. I look like this. He turned up. You saw how he looked. He looked mad. Yeah. He goes, I beat him though. So I, I, that person at his core, I believe that's the true Tyson Fury. The the one that says, you know what? I will fight anyone. Financially, it's got to make sense. Yes, I'll fight everyone, but we have to add in that new sentence. I, I, I can't let the sense financially. He will fight anyone if it makes sense financially. That's that's I truly can't let, no. You can't you can't say that because the track record don't prove that. Unfortunately, we can't just accept that narrative because he said it a thousand times. Like I'm, I'll fight anyone. Fight anyone. Okay, cool. But we go through your whole career and you're dying, like, bro. You fought one guy three times. Well, is this not all about finances, though? Fam, no, I'm not hearing that, bro. Then, listen. I'm with you. No, don't get twisted. Yeah, I'm, I'm not rolling. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that how... And I'm also... I'm we also know at his, core, at his core, he's not afraid, though. And I don't think... At, core, what's at, he got to be afraid of? Whilst I understand, fighting man, fear is not normal to these men. These men, they're built differently to us, and I completely understand that. And I, and I don't know that the fear narrative is just, like, absolutely scared, can run. However... This is not out of the realms of humanity for him to be scared of a fighter. Let's just be clear on that. Like, there's men that get in the ring with Mike Tyson and they can't even really be themselves because they're scared of the yeah. guy. You understand? You look at it, oh, wow. bro. You had all the tools to beat Mike Tyson. You landed a big shot. Frank Bruno, you landed a big shot, buckled him to his knees, and you was more surprised than anybody else that you did that. And now it was like, oh no, he's gonna hit me back. And yes, he did. Because but fair how's is real for anyone. How's an undefeated man? And I know you can say is who he's fought and this, that, and the other. And I hate it. Sounds like I'm I'm capping, but I'm just saying the other side. Yeah. How was an undefeated fighter? Yeah, afraid of a guy that lost to Ruiz yes. and to uh, and to Usyk. And I know they're shorter men, this, that, and the other. But he's sitting there at the top of the mountain. He yeah. feels that. And remember, you have to take in the delusion part as well. He's fought the person that's probably still one of the most dangerous hitters in the heavyweight division. Still to the, to this day, still and, one of them. And I have to go so back. How, how am I afraid? I've gone down, I've hit the canvas. And I how? have to go back to the point I already made about fighters being able to, against all the noise, know what they're Steve. looking at. Because if Wilder is coming through to say he can do everything, he just ain't got the mind part. You're still wary of that guy. If he has all of the tools, suppose he figures it out in there with you. Mm. So now you go back and you say, well, yeah, that's why you would take less money to go fight Fury, because Fury looked like he wasn't, 
he wasn't going to return to the level that he was at. He was fat out of shape. And you thought, yeah, I'd get him on my CV and I'm secured in this thing. Wrong. The thing slipped. It messed up. Now they're looking at AJ and thinking, if he figures it out on my watch, I'm done, isn't it? So then, then that ex- that would explain hesitation. I just again, as well, this I'm I'm dis I'll just say as a boxing fan, and uh, yeah. I'm disappointed. I'm thoroughly yeah. disappointed. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm sad that these men couldn't get to the table. I'm sad. Like this should ha- this should happen. And if it doesn't happen, it's a travesty in boxing. It is like this. This will go down as a travesty, and and they're all like, don't get me wrong. I feel there's blame to be sh- to, um to be placed everywhere in this thing. Um, yeah, no, all of it. This is boxing. This is the this is actually the problem with boxing. This is the actual. This is the biggest issue of boxing. How we won't get certain things that we should be seeing again. Like we shouldn't be surprised because we still got Errol and Crawford um, ticking over as well. Still not happening. And there's so many things that have been put in place to make that happen. So now you just say to yourself, fans like it's so it, it, it's annoying. Well, it you it's feel sad. like it's you, sad at the times. It's a, no, but you feel like we're so close to the finish line. Like yeah. I, at the beginning, I thought this fight ain't happening. Then I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. This is going to happen. Oh my goodness. Like they're talking. I never thought um, Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren will have dialogue like and try to make a fight like this happen. So you start to see, raw like AJ's rapping in the car. Chase, there's mad things happening. There's, we're here. We're getting close. Only to be at the fight at the hurdle, and you know what pisses me off is these men are gonna come out and fight in December. Both of them are we fighting in December at some point? It's just gonna. I'll be annoyed. I'll be annoyed. Obviously, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tune in and watch, but it's annoying because we should have got that. We should have got that, and it's like uh, yes, the losses hurt, and yes, the but end of the day, like this is what boxing is. Someone well, has to do something. Day, yeah. It's a sign of the times. Simple as that. Modern era of boxing, man, like, and this is one of those things, yeah, I saw a clip on on the internet the other day of Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward, you know, clips of their fights, and it was like their third one, their trilogy, and people were saying, yeah, man, see, this is what I like, fighters of the old days, they just got in there and they got it done. And I look at that and I say, okay, cool. But, you see, when 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 fight, young fighters come up, right, and not just young fighters, but young anything, when you're following guys who have gone before, you look at the work they did, that's also the first mark of inspiration. Then you also look at how their life turned out as the second mark of inspiration. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said I haven't looked at, say, some older comics and seen their personal life and all that kind of stuff and weighed it up for what this lifestyle really brings. Yeah. And I'd say, am I trying to Is be this, this the guy road? at the road? Exactly. So when you look at fighters that have come up in this era and all the older fighters that we call legends and we love them and we respect their legacy, and we see that these men are, you know, it really broke my heart to see Tommy Hearns auctioning his memorabilia to raise peas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that guy, like when I got into boxing, every single trainer I worked with, you're built like Tommy Hearns. You're built like Tommy Hearns. I was a welterweight, like that 140, clean wow. 10 stone, but 6'2. Mm-hmm. Bro, I was in there tall, fl- like that. I was every single Tommy Hearns bout from the first to the last up to where he went up to flipping cruiser, like he went big. But to know that this guy ended up in financial difficulties, that was also an inspiration marker for young fighters. So mm-hmm. when these guys look and they say, yeah, he did all that stuff in the ring, but then he ended up broke. So now you look at the modern era, they find their rival. They find him. They find each other and they go, yo, it's you. And we're going to jostle and we're going to talk and we're going to do all of this stuff for as long as our career goes. And when it's time to cash in, we'll cash in and we'll fight old. Manny Pacquiao mm-hmm. and Floyd. Now, that one, it was a weird one because they tried to make that fight, but that's how it ended up, regardless of whatever led it there. Kell Brook Khan, same thing. Their man got in there as two old men, and they said, let's duke it out. Khan wasn't even upset with the loss. He's just there like, well, yeah, yeah I'm going to retire now because it's like, I'm not in my prime. You don't know it would have been different a few years ago. Well, I've no. got a feeling of that. But what's the yard feels like that a little bit. Well, this is what I'm saying. So this is the shape of the modern era because these men are like, these men probably look at it like, if I can get mad peas, and not take the punishment, and I'm gonna I walk off into the next stage of my life with money. That looks like a better route than being the guy that's getting into the cheeseman bouts, and I'm getting mad blows. Duh, 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 duh. You're derailing me from getting to the championship team because I'm fighting guys on the way up, and now it's like 
yeah, my money's all right, but it's not going to run me to my 80s. So this is a culture, it's e- economic, <laughs> economics have affected the what we're seeing in the sporting output. So I don't get too mad at negotiations holding up the fight, but I do get mad at the fact that the fights literally r- run along that string of not happening. Yeah. And then we get the dead quality fight. This thing changes if fighters in retirement get looked after. Then man will say, I'll put my body on the line then. Yeah. Because they love fighting, but yeah. they also don't want to close the door on what the second half of their lives look like. And I, I, I it does come back down to that for me. So I like, whilst we try to shame young fighters and say, back in the day, Joe Fraser, Ali, there was no issues on negotiations. Yeah, because they were both getting oh. robbed. They were both getting robbed. That's a good point. That's a great point. They had to keep fighting. They had to keep fighting. Because the we'll take a big Two months. Boom, let's go again. Yeah, even, yeah, it's true. And you had to be the top, top dog to have all the endorsements. Mm. Not everyone, because while there's all them men, there's a lot of boxes that we don't know about. And there's a lot. There's a list below that are waiting for sponsorship, waiting for endorsements, waiting for all these things that... Think, think about how dark life would have been yeah, as a fighter that weren't a star. And you ain't got no social media, bro. How do you get on? You go to the gym every day and no one cares, fam. Mm. So when we start to look back and say those things, the modern era is going to have to shake up how it does and to it, get that out, out get of fighters again. The only way you get on back in the day then is by fighting all the time. Fighting That's the only time. way and get, build, building up a, a yeah. winning record. But That'd now... Really undeniable. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, social media has... Yeah, that I, I forgot about that link. Social media has changed that. So you don't have to do as much. You don't have to put your body through as much. Like, you, you have to ask yourself, what do those fighters look like in this era? Would they, as, would they have fought as much? Probably not. Survival dictates how a lot of people approach work. Yeah. Straight. You have fighters today that are like, uh, I can, yeah, I can take it or leave it. I'm getting paid nice. I'm making, I'm doing whatever business. Why things Garcia. are getting people more savvy. Garcia, Garcia, Garcia ain't putting yeah. himself through punishment, and Garcia sure as he's not back to back. Why? When I could just be on TikTok? <laughs> he said, he said, oh, what? Do what? Now, obviously, that the one, one is it's mad. It is no, you you make a very good point. You make a mm. mad. That's mad. That's a, and that's in everything. That's in everything, even down to us in our careers, right? Before you'll be traipsing up and bro, you see, driving up and down the motorway, yeah, trying to go and do stand up, yeah. Fem, fem. You yeah. know, that's been my life. I know, know that's been my life. <laughs> as soon as the TV door opened up for me, yeah, <laughs> and I got like my first TV check, I said, drive to where to Burnley to a pub in Burnley for a 15 minute set for how much? Get out of here. That's funny. <laughs> I said, <laughs> you are an absolute disgrace. I'm not going. But then only only because, only because now, then you say, well, I'm going to do stand up my way. Really? That's what it now comes to. Then after yeah. you say to yourself, well, here you go. We got a show. Sorry to plug it again. But here you go. Now, now that show is created because you're saying, well, I don't need to do it in that way anymore. Mm. And that's someone else, the old comic will be look at it and say, well, he's not doing it right, is he? That's not well, listen, if- this is the thing, like, because um, me, I've done it the old way, and yeah, you know I mean, I'm a see, I'm seeing it. So it's like for me, I'll always say, don't like to a young comic coming up, don't try and copy unicorns. So you can do it this random, do it oh, a completely like, different way. And I was, like, got, like, I've done yeah, it. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, done, I've been. Don't get twisted. It wasn't like a no, social media run. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Oh this, no, that's the real work. work. That real work. You can't cheat that thing. Not the same. Because no stage, I the stage, you see stage presence and knowing what to do when it gets nuts, you'll never learn that on social media. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the one I am telling you now. <laughs> if you think that you're like, you will never up. learn that. On, oh man, you see I mean, Story Moon, yeah. <laughs> telling Sunday. jokes in that place, Sun, um, Sunday. Sunday and there was the mad stripper pole that was just there. Don't know why, yeah? <laughs> Listen, you have to be in your bag, fam. And you know the ones there where, I remember when I first started, I'd written a strong 10 set. I was ready to do my 10-minute set. And I remember the bar, ten, and I was so such a written comic. Like, yeah. word for word, yeah. it was it was going to be the same as I written. Bro, bartender dropped and smashed a glass, giving someone a drink. And me in my brain, but I was, it was my first year of stand-up. Fam, I didn't know how to react to it. I just, I just quite looked... 
and just continue to choke. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll look back at it and I think to myself, that is hilarious, bro, because <laughs> the skills hadn't been picked up yet. <laughs> them, them just like, and this is what, oh man. You gotta do the work, but. You gotta do the work. Smart, all, be smart. All, yeah, all boxers, man. You, you don't leave the, do not leave the social media angle unturned. It's like, and we're all getting, let's, let's talk pivot. to you. I've got a beautiful pivot now. Yeah. This is why Connor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. Oh, are so man, significant. Man. You know why? Yeah. You know yeah. why? Because they have not drawn this thing out a bit, bro. This talk had began on just for a little while, and now we're here. Eubank Jr. Yeah. said, nah, let's do this thing right now. Connor Ben said, all right, let's have it. Yeah. Because I'm already at this frequency. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, this is a page out of the book of the old school. Because their yeah. man said, We'll do it now, and we'll have time to do it two more times if we want. Yeah. There's no room for many of these nowadays with how guys want to do that last late-in-the-day fight. Now, we have a prime, fresh rivalry in the making, if the fight delivers. Because, let's face it, if Eubank comes in and steamrolls man in two, we're not getting that again. And we shouldn't. Because that would mean that the it's experiment not really failed. Really yeah. Really it's not by it's not gonna be in two. No, no, no. I'm just saying I said it's got everything. Like, no, I'm with you though. I'm on I'm on this journey with you. It's got yeah. everything, it's got the makings of everything to deliver and be what we need it to be, right? Mm -hmm. just, just pride alone, pride, legacy, everything is in there, all the ingredient and disrespect, pride, oh. legacy, disrespect. Yeah, it's all there. So now where where are we going with this one? Right? Like now it's like I I have to, I can't get knocked out in the second round and stay down on 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 either ends. Like we have to get to at least what's respectful. Seven eight is respectful. You can't be upset. I mean, if I if this is for Connor, by the way, if Chris you if Chris Eubank goes down, we're in trouble. Where this if is Eubank Junior goes down, he loses. we're in trouble. No, we're in trouble. Like like if he, if he goes down at any point, he loses. no pod no pod <laughs> no pod. <laughs> We're in trouble. He can't go down. That's that's how deep it is. He, this is a fight, yeah. And that's why the stakes are so high. This is a fight that none of them can afford to lose. But professionally, especially for Chris Eubank, he can't afford to lose this one. Because, again, how people will speak about you. Bro, again, people still want to laugh at AJ for fighting a heavyweight, but he came up from cruiserweight division. And people yeah. have done that before, so let's not pretend. But it's fine. New era. We'll go yeah. with it. Yeah, whatever. You see this, yeah. You see this jump that is being made, and yeah, I know the rehydration. You can't lose to him. There's gonna be fighters in Eubank's division that say to yourself, Yeah, look how Manuel Char, and this is a mad segue. Look how Manuel Char's now talking about um about Joshua. Now he can only do that because he's he sends again. This is a, it's a shark business. So this once they small blood, when they feel that there's a there's a weakness or there's a chink in your armor. We're all on it. We're all let on it. Be, let me be absolutely clear. Yeah. No one cares what Char says. No, no one cares what he says. No, but <laughs> a child would never say that. How many years ago, child would never say that? Juggernaut would never say some of the things he said. But as soon as they were, oh, you're human. I'm on it. Now the dis disrespect comes. And it's easy. Everyone in that division that Chris Eubank finds himself in is going to say to himself, uh, or your food, and anyhow he loses, I'm telling you, the Jake Paul contract that's going to turn up at his door, it will be there and meet Jake Paul will say, my turn next. I'm next. Everybody get out of the way. You look and fight him after I finish, after I've had my big fight with this guy, and the only thing that's funny about you, Bank, is even if he loses, I think he'll still carry himself with, like he didn't lose. <laughs> you know, like... It, that's what I was going to say, yeah. I was just going to say this. Eubank Jr., let me just send a clear message to Eubank Jr. right now. Regardless of how this outcome goes on Saturday, yeah, please do not retire. Because the entertainment that you have brought us yeah. in the lead up to this fight has been I've... monumental. I No, I don't care. If he loses, I want him to be in that post-fight brazen and confident and I'll back he it. Can't. Just get straight oh. into that camera and just be like, oh, I'm, just setting, I'm just setting this thing up for the trilogy, baby. I want him to be literally, I want him to be like, boom, boom. He's leveled up the legacy. Nice. Now I'm going to get it done. Best out of three. 
Let's go, baby. I'm the guy. You need me to get this done. I want him to be nah, relentless. Nah, uh, you can only say that. No, I don't care. A war- he, no, wait. No, you're not allowed. He has the audacity necessary Trav, to get this done. You're not allowed. Oh, my goodness, Trap. You're not allowed to I say that. To win. Unless, the only win. way he can say that is they've both gone down. It's been a, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy. When I tell you it's a crazy Bro. fight, ninth round. If he goes down in the ninth no, and says, no. well, he got me with sign, and I was at 60%, I say, you know what? Run it back. No, here's what he does. Here's what he's got to do because he's unhinged. I need it to be a psycho way out. It can't just be a general, a general, like a genuine win. He needs yeah. to like go to war and it be the neck and neck, absolute mazzoline scrap fight of the decade. And in round 12, take an unnecessary, just a light jab, take a knee. And smile at Conor Ben as he takes the tenth count. <laughs> 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 and being in that post fight, you saw what I just. I want this again. I said this. If I win, we don't get it again. I wanted this again. <laughs> like, bro, like that would be the most unhinged display ever in boxing. Taking the knee, and smiling at him. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what's so annoying? I can't say he can't do that. <laughs> That's the most annoying part. I want to be see, bro. I could never. A scrap of the deck. He, he goes. I can't see. I didn't want this guy to points. Not of Nigel Ben. Not of Conor Ben. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> this kid got balls. He's got way more balls than I thought. Let's do it again. I wanted this again. I need this again. <laughs> what? what? You know what? Even there's, there's still there's there's a. There's an eight percent chance here he could do that. I can't say, you know, in some fights, saying never happened with him because he's just so. He took me to the twelfth. He took me to the twelfth. I said this should never have happened. So I thought, right, you deserve to win. The fact you got me into the twelfth, you deserve to win because it's, it's disrespect. End of the day, I can't believe they've given him to me. You know, um, <laughs> I'm surprised that people have done that. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be so dangerous. <laughs> I'm wrong with this guy. <laughs> that's if why I, I'm a you back fan now. You I don't back. care what anyone says. You better not retire. I don't ever oh, want. Uh, no, no, I needed to win. I needed to. I actually need him to win now because. But, but, but no, let's get real now, though. Yo. I think Connor can do it. I really do think. He oh, can but do I don't. It. That's what I'm saying, and I don't think he can do it. Just purely on, I just think Eubank is is ready for this one. I think. There's a lot of stuff outside the ring that's gone on. You say he's and ready. Basically, I think he's ready. He he's trained ready. himself. Ronnie yeah. Davis has come out and said the usual. He don't listen to no one. The guy's come back to do what... So my thing is this. That version of Junior, that isn't taking... We like, that, we like that version of Junior, though. That version of Junior is more beatable than Roy, than, than other Junior. you got to remember, what? there's set... No. Okay, listen to what I'm saying now. Now we're taking it to the boxing. This is why I say Conor Ben can win the fight because Conor right. Ben is a better boxer than Eubank Jr., right? Mm-hmm. There's certain gaping holes in Eubank Jr.'s game, right? Mm-hmm. You go back to the George Groves fight. Shay, um, What's his name? Shane McGuigan. He came out and did an interview and he talked about the game plan when George Groves fought him. He goes, the thing about Jr. is that he, he doesn't move well to the left. He doesn't do certain things right. He doesn't really jab much. And there's certain things that makes him reset. If he sets his feet, don't swing with him. Mm-hmm. And then you'll be, you know I'm saying, that's a very simple game for very basic stuff at distance. Now, my thing is, Eubank Jr. hasn't particularly addressed those gaping holes in his game. If you keep, if you right, don't, now I'm gonna if you don't, weakness. okay, let's listen. Oh, you, listen. Need this weakness. you need to hear this weakness, though. You need to hear this weakness. Go on. However, while that is there, Connor Ben also is a descendant. He's direct like his dad. And he will change. Yes, there was a plan. We had a book that was supposed to be reading from, bruv. And then after he says, you know what? I'm doing this. You've hit me with that shot. Didn't like it. Watch this now. So he has to listen to, you need Conor Ben to actually listen to Tony Sim the the whole fight. He can't have no moments of, ah, he's doing a, he's getting into his, into his zone. And And he will. Of the two fighters in there, Conor Ben is more designed to follow instruction than Junior is. Yeah, Conor Ben gets better every single fight. And his approaches, that fight he had against, I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy was literally wheeling him around the ring. He was missing that right hand all night. The next fight, that was addressed. I think it was the Algerian after that. Yeah. So for me, I look at it and I'm like, bro, this is a man that's developing. He's adding things to yes. his game. Yes, but Junior he... is not adding stuff to his own game by being yes. his own trainer. 
Yes, but do you, what you're missing, though, is what the other variable you have to now think of is he hasn't been pushed to this level. He hasn't been at this level. He hasn't had, and he hasn't been in the ring with this level of adversity and having to hear stuff. Because yet, like it or not, you're going up, you're fighting someone, you're, you're bigger. This is not your natural weight. You're not, this is not where you feel, naturally feel comfortable. Yes, you're walking around like that. But again, as he, as Tyson said, everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face. This and that's why. And you that's have to why, see yourself in this fight. And that's why if anybody's going to be following instructions because they're in new territory, it's going to be Conor Ben. I mean, with a bigger man, I can't be my old self that rushes forward and goes to war. Trust me, everybody expects Conor Ben to go to what absolute I war. Him into a war, though. You might what drag him into, you, you might drag him in for a round, but he has to know. There's no way Conor Ben and his guys ain't gonna work out that if we go to war toe to toe all fight long, we're gonna lose. He's gonna know that. You might drag him in for a moment, but I promise you, we're gonna see an educated version of a game plan in there. And if anybody's got a great relationship, there's a synergy with Conor Ben and Tony Sims that yep. you make ain't gonna have in that corner. He hasn't got it. Ronnie Davis is coming out to say he don't listen to no one. You know senior is not backing this fight at all. Junior's on his own. And that's why, and again, certain man, certain man can find their way to swim in these situations. That's this right. Is, this, is, this is when he says, you know what? Shit, it's time now. It's time. And again, there's so much for me. What he's learned about himself is, oh, I can sell it. Like, if he never knew he could sell a fight before, he knows now. You see, you're meant to be in this room. Eubank is actually, that's why I want him to win because he's meant to be in this room. He's meant to be in and amongst it. Like he's boxing, a star, he's a star. He's a star, like it or not. Like there's no way, there's there's a lot of fighters and what the killer is, it's genuine. It's real. It's his personality. It's, there's nothing um, cookie cutter about it or, or there's, it's not like copy paste. This is this guy's, this is his personality. You know what I mean? Even the way he plays, bro, who plays computer games like that? What, He's with, the, with his legs folded? <laughs> stretching. No one does that. I've never gone to someone's house and seen that. And the, the killer legs, is... His, bro, the legs are literally up on his shoulder. <laughs> hi, bro. He's, what's mad is his boys come to the house <laughs> and they watch it. They all watch boxing together because he watched the Billy um, Joe Sauna fight. Um, like that. The legs, <laughs> the legs up is just... <laughs> So the guy is different. He's the so guy is not, he's so different. And again, it's such a character that is necessary in boxing. I want to see him in there. I want to see him having the talk, the fight. Like so now people oh understand, bro. So, I, I want to see it. Now people understand when I said I want to see a world where Eubank Jr. is a world champ. I knew this was I in him. This. No, I, I knew need, this was in I him. You said this. You said this for a long time, yeah. Bro, I'm rocking. I'm on this, like, I'm Thank telling you. you right now, this guy is... We need him to get a belt. I don't care how it's going to be done. Even if it's a light, vacant thing, let I that man that hold a main belt. I need I need to see it, because, again, the entertainment factor, this is entertainment. Boxing is in the entertainment business. Let's, and it has to it has to wake up and understand that. Top-tier stuff, it's, bro. I, it's, what, even, it's even making old Ubeck Jr. moments look even better in the light. Because now we're starting to realise, oh, this is who you've always been. There's a video where he fought this guy and the guy must have injured his shoulder and he pulled out the fight. So we're in the post fight now. These men are talking and these men are like, yeah, look, all right. So, you know, you know, he's like, yeah, my shoulder's gone. Yeah, I tried to go through it, but it's just bad. And then Eubank gets on there. He's like, you know, professional fighters, you have to go through these things, you know? You know, at this level, you know, there's just no excuses. It's just, bro, they're side by side, like chatting. And it's just like, yeah. And the guy's like, wait, no, hang on. Like, don't start, dude. bro. My shoulder was gone. Yeah, yeah, cool. You and he's like, bro, my second amateur bout, I had to fight the whole thing. My second bout, my professional bout, I had to fight the whole thing with one arm because I had a shoulder injury. So you know, we just have to just move on with these things. And the guy's <laughs> like, he's like, listen, look. He goes, yeah, but not the whole fight. Like this is the third round. I'm not gonna go seven rounds with you with one arm. He goes, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. When we, what we sign up for. And he goes, listen, if you wanna go now with one hand, da -da -da -da, bro, yeah, <laughs> you will never straighten it out. And the genius face is just like the whole time on face, just smiling. <laughs> so he just walks back like smart. I'm like, you know what? The sicko that we're seeing now has always been there. At this point, we have to get behind Junior, even, no matter what happens on Saturday, and say, keep going. We love, we all love Conor Ben, but Junior deserves some love too now, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, I yeah, I just want to see it. You know what he did? It, it, yeah, he's great. He's like just to again, <laughs> just the, the talking game has been incredible. It is like if, if, if he could be Joe Joyce's mentor on talking, the the do, world would be different. Do, it would do nothing for Joe Joyce. <laughs> no, it would. Do, it would All that st- would happen is that whenever they have their weekly one hour chats on Zoom. Joe Joyce would laugh all the way through and just continue being himself as he goes through his normal post fight regime, pre fight regime. He ain't changing. Nah, he'll be good for it. I think he'll be. That's the perfect trainer. The perfect trainer for him is because if Joe Joyce develops the stare, all he needs to stare and not look like he's thinking about it, what his next sentence is going to be. That's Joe all. Joyce. Joe Joyce is not giving us anything close to that, bro. Let's not even pretend. The sm- he will smile out of his own smolder. He, he's he's yeah, too it, happy. It, 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 he's too happy. <laughs> Joe Joyce is too happy. Yeah, he's too happy. I, he doesn't. <laughs> he's not gonna give you smoke and beef and smaller. Bro, yeah, Joe yeah. Joyce can't wait to laugh once this convo's done. I like, you know, I like Joe Joyce as well. Trust he's me, he's another, happy, bro. He's another one that is just like he's I a like. Nice guy. Him, he's a night. He, honestly, he's a he's love. A ju- 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 <laughs> He's a nice guy, man. I, I, I like the fact that even I, I watched him talking for talk sport and stuff. He was talking to Neil and stuff. And I think he was just saying, um, it's so funny. Like, he's like, it's good to be up there with the top guys now. They mention my name with the top guys. And that's well done to him. Like, I really, I really do hope that with whatever's happening, he gets a shot now. Like, he deserves, you know, he deserves what, a shot. What I find funny is that. David Hayes been banging his drum for Joe Joyce for years. Remember, he was on Haymaker Promotions, fam. Yeah, and I'm telling you, as a as a big David Hayes fan, I used to listen to that Joe Joyce talk and think, I don't understand why you're backing this brother, man. <laughs> you know, you're just looking at your dog like, why are you so invested in my man, fam? <laughs> <laughs> now I see it. Now, now I see, see it. it. Now you see it. Uh, now I see it. I don't know, man. You so know, what, what's next for me? Joe Joyce. Yeah. Why? If he makes everybody look like that, avoidance is what's next for him. But no, like, where, who's his next? Like, where? No, who's I'm, I'm being, I'm being very serious when I say that. If he makes, if he continues to make everybody look like Joe Park, Parker, yeah, avoidance will be the next thing for him, because no men are not gonna be men are gonna be like, I don't know, I don't know if my power's gonna change this thing now. Mm, I, and who's the twelve round fighters? The only one who I say definitely beats him is Usyk, and that's and that's because I'm like I can trust Usyk to not be there for those mad punches, yeah, and to not get tired throwing his own punches, yeah. Whereas these men start teeing off and they start loving that the way the connection's feeling, but they're also not. Like, hang on, I don't, he's still coming forward. The juggernaut how? is here. He's why is he still in front of me? With like, the zero the zero point three second response time to the big punches as well, bro. <laughs> Joseph Parker landed a, a full body weight turn right hand I on the floor. Bang, bang. Kept bang. Didn't even disturb his own punch. You know when you see men get punched on their punch? It's like the, yeah. their punch loses power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, the, the pan- still landed. <laughs> um, we're running out of time, but I really want to quickly talk about this. Denzel Bentley, he's 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 gone for it. And I I I have so much respect. For the yeah. move, he was on Monday Night Smoke. You lot, make sure you go back and listen to it. We spoke to him quite early in the early in the show. Um, he's going to be fighting in Vegas. This is it. Like again, he's fighting. This it's a di- it, it, it's a very difficult fight. Yeah, it's like it's beyond difficult. Yeah, how do I pronounce it, Yannibek? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I um, don't know. I'll be real. I don't know how to pronounce it, but you know, I don't. You um, know, but yeah, anyway, you know, however, yeah. There you go. However. Just listening to sometimes you have to you have to go for it. We gotta get I, that clip out actually. I just realized that that didn't go out. But yeah, that, yeah. You have to go for it. I'm so proud of him for going for it. I, I think that that's that's a big move. That is a big, big move, big balls. And again, like closed mouths, that's the, that's the line that I always hear. It's always in my head now. Closed mouths don't get fed. So if you don't, if you don't say put yourself in position, because this fight was never gonna really be offered to my mm. man. Let's mm-hmm. keep it. He is so far. We're talking about he just talked about fighting Felix Cash and um closing the show on BT. Now we're getting out to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Big man, do what you do what you need to do. Your stock will go up. Just 
fight the be the fighter that you know you just des- you are in inside, bro. Like the sky, you can enjoy that. I really hope he wins. I think it's a tall it's, order. But I'm my behind. Thing is, my thing That's is, you you gotta ball. believe in a in a way that's even past mental. It's a spiritual belief so, where it's no matter what comes, you're gonna be enough. You're gonna have what needs to be had. And yeah. upsets happen in boxing all the time. We're not yeah. gonna be deluded and pretend you're going in there as the favorite. You're going in there as the underdog. One but is. upsets happen all the time. When a man has got your number, he has got your number. Nobody yeah. had Holyfield beating Tyson, fam. Let's be real. Like at that time, man weren't talking no, Holyfield's I... name. And I remember oh, the surprise as the rounds went on. Oh my days! He's beating him at his own game. Yeah. It's it's, it's there, there. There's moments in boxing. Many moments where this has happened. Buster Douglas, bruv. Bruv, more power to you. You've got the right mindset. The way you was on smoke mentally lets us know that you ain't doubting yourself one bit. And just mm. for the record, we're fully behind you, fam. Stay there. And stay there. Stay in that place of thingy. Stay in that spot. It's, it's brilliant. Like mentality mo- men- mentality monster. Um, mm. and then, um, Quickly, we had, to, we had to quickly touch on this, but Dylan White has changed his trainer. I told... I said it early. I said... I said Xavier. Yeah. I don't I like I don't know. It's the kind it of condition it, 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 really, it weren't really yeah. looking really and then we saw the we, what we saw is we saw someone progressing very quickly. Mm-hmm. Me and you will finish, we'll come and do Monday Night Smoke after Dylan White's fought, and we say this he's improved this, he's improved this. Because remember, yeah. he was a kickboxer. We have yeah. to understand that. And he weren't he weren't taking the health thing properly. He wasn't after the loss to AJ, he yeah. said, I need to take this thing serious. And he did. And we saw we saw so Mark much Tibbs. under Mark Tibbs. It was looking under good. Mark Tibbs growth. Mm-hmm. And then after we go to Xavier, and then we we tried to look, we tried to look like we tried to look undillon whiteish in terms of there was a fight against that the, the um in the garden. When he gets knocked out, he looked good in terms of it's jab. probably nice. He looked good. The jab was good. But then they took away from him something. He's a finisher. They mm. took away the time to finish. He didn't finish. And then Pilev said, all right, I'm wounded and you want to back me up. Hold this uppercut. Mm. The game changed. You see, we held the uppercut and we said, whoa, 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 whoa. And then everyone realized, hey. This uppercut here. It's the button. Oh, mad. This is a button now. It's the so off button. Say it's an off button. So now, hey, Xavier, you say to yourself, well, this is my fighter's weakness. I got to teach him how to not find himself, keep finding himself in this position. And it couldn't, it, yes, he's got a weakness, but for some strange reason, his fighting style always led to this thing happening and that that lead up to fury i don't know what they did i don't know what they worked on because that game plan for me was a mess even if you say yeah he tickled him in rare rare i don't understand the game plan that he did not look like himself in any part of that he did not pour he didn't lay nothing to him it was horrible against fury and i i know he's a better fighter than that so i'm glad he's changed his trainer i hope we see um a change in him. I heard he's going to be, should be fighting again November some sometime then. I really, I really hope Dylan, like, returns. I want to see him fight the juggernaut late, probably next year, early next year. That'd be dope. Yeah. I mean, my, my like for Dylan White as a person is why I will keep an open mind on this. Um, But, you know, there's, it's a tricky one with Dylan White because I think the stuff that he probably needs to fix. I don't think it can be fixed. I think there's more to do with how his body's made up, like the way his body's set. I've always said about his his body composition. It always he just has a movement that suggests he's off balance, mm. and I don't know if balance is something that can be fixed. I don't know how at this stage in the career, but you know, I keep an open mind because I like the guy. I like him a lot. And nah, I, you know what I mean? I, I, I really his like story. Him. His story is a very inspiring one. So I do wish him all the best. Um, I do want to before we before we close. I want to read a DM that we got a couple of weeks ago, and I've wanted to read this for a while. Yeah, and I've kept on forgetting, but I felt like it's quite important. I wanted to share it. Um, so shouts out to Supermo Eight Three sent us a DM, and he goes, "Guys, love the pod. 
uh, and, and I've just caught the latest episode. I just wanted to say I've always preferred Fury over AJ because um, because I thought he was the better fighter. I struggled to fully get on board with AJ because Fury was my guy. Another big part of it was because Eddie Hearn and his full on his foot and his full on pushing of AJ as the face of boxing. Sometimes you just want to root for the little man because I never understood Travis bringing AJ's race into it on the pod. I'm Scottish and I just didn't get it until a recent holiday to London. At Trafalgar Square with my wife and daughter, I saw a young black guy with his girlfriend take some crazy racist abuse by some idiot. The young guy just tried to keep walking and I stopped and I told the guy to be quiet. He goes in brackets, that's the PC version. He goes, I was totally taken aback that so many people just ignored the situation. Literally nobody said anything. He goes, so yeah, keep representing your community, guys, and keep up this, this great wee podcast. All the best. And I, 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 I was so raw. I thought that's an, that I, 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 when I saw it, I was quite touched. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because it's like I, I do take a lot of slack taking on like when I mention certain things on this podcast because yeah. there's, there's certain dynamics that are at play that are at play, and you know, until somebody points them out, you could just ignore them. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying, and I, I, I make it my business to have those difficult conversations for yeah. the basis that once you know differently, you'll feel differently. Do you know what I mean? So that some people may never know and have never had a reason to think of anything like this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So for me, it's like when I see those moments, I'm like, you know, I appreciate the fact that your mind was open enough to hear something that you immediately didn't see as a as an immediate issue. But now you've taken, you know, you've taken on something that someone said. Like we we live in that community. We're black people. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? We know when I'm speaking about racism, I'm yeah, speaking yeah. It as a an experienced thing. Yeah. As yeah, a yeah. as a person, like a, a white person, maybe you don't experience it like that you wouldn't have seen it up close to recognize it but i like the fact that some people can say you know what that's not my experience but i'm here these guys speak on it so now in the real world i'm now open my eyes to a certain thing and i'm like you know what i get it now mm. i love that because that's all i, I love want this part, again. yeah that's all i'm What's about that? i'm not i'm not on anybody feeling bad or trying to feel like you're attacked i'm on progressive movement to the point yeah. where now you can see something in real life and you know what now nah, I know what's happening here, and then um, and boom, boom, boom. So yeah, shout yeah, out to you, big respect, man. Yeah, you can't listen. Don't ever, just don't catch yourself, Gareth A. Davis, in the situation, in it. <laughs> so don't be in there. If you saw what's going on, what's that? How do you say it? I don't know. You talking? I never meant. I I never said it was your fault. I I didn't say you were to blame. No, what I said was, like, bro. You know what's bad? We're gonna. There's gonna be a time when we see Gareth A. Davis. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be one of the funniest moments ever. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Wait. No, it's gonna be smoke. It's gonna. No, it's gonna be smoke. There's no way we know. It's gonna be because we 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 won't be able to go over there and try and pretend. We have to be keep it honest and say this is what I think. I yeah. think we're moving mad. Yeah, you, you, 100%. No way. I will not allow if if, if if the conversation starts like, bro, so nice to meet. Nah, bro. bro, listen. bro why do you say that? That's how the conversation starts. What rock band were you a part of in the 80s? Because you got fame and presence right now that I don't understand, fam. Was it Rolling Stones? <laughs> was it, you know what I mean? Like, is that how you man was giving up? Was you, was yeah. you, backing, were you playing the guitar? <laughs> <laughs> No, you have to just get straight to it. Then we can, because there's no beef, like, but it has to be less talk. It's not, it's not beef, but you know what I mean? No it's, beef, but it's less personal. talk. personal. These men shouldn't take it personal. It's yeah, just... you're moving mad, so let's have that conversation. Just box it in, let's debate. Anyway, you look, look after yourself. Buy a ticket to the show. Don't be oh, snakes. Guys, we're going to put a link in the bio as well. Tick, where yeah. you can get your tickets to the show. And also, there's going to be another link to the Great Defeated Fight Club League, right? So, there we go. We've managed to get there's a there's a there's an app and you hit the link and it'll take you straight in. Set your profile up. The information will be how to join the Great Defeat is Fight Club League, and we're all making our fight predictions. The league is gonna oh, be set. You sis. And we need to figure out we need to figure out a prize for who ends up in first place. That's how we're gonna do this thing. So uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at the end of when are we gonna there's a uh, date uh, closes. I think it's December, I think it's the end of December or middle of oh, December. When the, end, the end of the yeah, year. That's when the yeah. league ends. And whoever's at top, I think we should figure out prizes. We, we we'll be yeah. prizes. There'll be prizes. prizes. Yeah, be prizes. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed. Guaranteed there'll be prizes. And there's yeah. bragging rights. Again, you will, when you call it Monday Night Smoke, you will be the predict way. The, what do, I don't know. The, be, the proof will be in the pudding, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, no one can talk to you. And that's that's powerful because then you'll be the role in you. You'll actually be the role in you because it'll be the first one to hold this title, fam. Listen, it's real. <laughs> in your predictor. 
All right, you lot, yeah, cool. we're done. See you later. Till next time, we're gone. Yo, people, thanks for watching the Undefeated Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, leave a comment and all that good stuff, man. This is the place to be.